creating a calculator using Python TKinter. We have to use Python programming to create a basic text-based calculator. So we're going to now use Python GUI. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. So the Python GUI is known as TKinter. So we're going to use that to build a calculator. In order to create our calculator program, we have to first import the TKinter module. So we say from TKinter import star. So what this will do, this will import all the functions within the TKinter that we need within our programs. So the first function we, we're going to do call is going to be a the window and the function is called TK. Okay, and I'm gonna assign this function to a variable called window. The second function I'm going to do is, is gonna be title, because obviously our windows will need a title. Okay, and our title is going to be called calculator. What we could do now is actually run our program just to see how it runs. So in order to run our program, we have to call a function called main loop. And we have to call that function with our window name. Okay, and this main loop just keeps your window on the screen. So let's save it and run our program. File, save and run module. Okay, so you can see that this program has just um, created our, our window for us. This is the window, the TK window, and also it's placed the title calculator here. Okay, let's go on and make our display window for our calculator. So in order to make a display window for our calculator, we need to call the entry widget. So that's capital E, entry and we're going to say where do we want to put the entry widget we want to put it on our window we want it to be we're going to give it a width which is going to equal 60 and then we're going to give it um, a border width as well okay which we're going to say is 10 it's going to equals 10 and then we're going to make the display window color light blue. So we go background equals speech marks. We can say light blue. Okay, this entry widget here, we have to sign it to a variable. So the variable that I'm going to sign it to is going to be called entry. So entry one. So we don't want to call it the same name. So entry one equals. Okay, then we have to do is actually say where we want the entry window to be displayed on our actual window. Okay, so we're gonna use our variable entry one and use the function grid to place the display window. So grid, and we're going to say where do we want it? We want it to start at row zero column also zero we want it to span so we're going to say column span equals four so we want this to span four columns and we want it to have some padding so it that actually looks a bit it can actually stand out so padding is going to padding x equals 10 and then pad y also equals 10. Okay, so what we've done now, we've just created a display window using the entry widget to be placed on our main window. And what we've said, we want it to be, um, the width to be 60, the border width, we want it to be 10. The background color is gonna be light blue. 
we've said where we want it to be placed within the window. So we've said we want it to be placed on row zero, column zero, and it to span four columns. It to have um, some padding on it. So the padding size will be 10, 10 padding X and 10 pad Y. So let's run it and see how, see what happens so far to our calculator. So we go file, save, and let's run. Okay, so you can see we've just created our display window. And also you can see that the title is a bit more pronounced now. So we typed something in there. Obviously that's our, where the display for the numbers will actually appear. So now let's go and create the buttons for our calculator. First of all, let's create a function that will position the buttons within our window. So I'm going to call this function add button. So if you look at my other videos, it will actually explain a bit about how to create functions. So we're going to call this function add button. And we're actually going to pass an argument to this function. So we're going to have a parameter called num. Okay, and then we're going to create the button. So button, which is a TK inter function. Where do we want the button? We want the button on the window. Okay, it has to be lowercase, just as you've defined it in the first part of your program. So window, those buttons, we want it to have some padding as well. So I'm, I'm gonna say padding x equals 16. Okay, and I, I do want it to have some border. Okay, so I'm going to have border is going to equals eight. Okay, the foreground. Okay, the color. Okay, on the text, I want it to be blue. So I'm going to put blue. The text, which is going to come in from our variable here, num, okay, which is going to be called when we create another function for our create button. So I'm going to call that, that going to be called num. Um, the width of our button is going to be five. And then what we need to do, we're going to have to have a command. So when someone clicks the button, something needs to happen. So I'm going to say command, okay, equals lambda. So I'm going to use a lambda. Okay, I'm going to say click. Button, okay, string, num, okay, and this is going to be a, a return function, so it's going to return back to the function that calls, called it. Okay, so what this function does, what this function does, it creates a button on our window that has um, padding X of 16, it has a border width of 8, a foreground colour for the um, numbers on numbers will be blue, the text equals num, so the text itself has been assigned whatever number is actually comes in as an argument through our parameter here for our function. The width of the button is five. The command, we've used the lambda function because we are passing our, an argument through our click button function, we have to use a lambda function. So we're gonna create a function called click button and we'll speak about that function once we've, once we've created it. So now let's go and create our buttons for our window. 
So we're going to create ourselves another function. And that function, I'm going to call it create button. Okay, so if you remember to create our function, we go def. And we're going to call it create button. Okay, we're not going to have any parameters here. But this function is going to be able to is going to call our add button function. So we're going to create our first button. Our first button is going to be zero. So we're going that's the variable name we've called it, and we're going to call it, assign it to our function add button. And what we're going to pass through as an argument is going to be the number zero. So we're going to create our other buttons as well. All going to have the same format. So this button is going to be called one. Or pass an argument one. Okay, so we need to create nine number buttons. Okay, so you can see what I've done here. I've created a variable for each button. I've assigned it to the function add button. So these are arguments which will be passed as parameters through this function here. So I'm going to create the other buttons. Seven, eight, and then we just need one more button. Okay, six. Okay, and then we're going to create our last button. Then what we need to do also is add, also we need to add our operations. Okay, so we're going to add also our operations to the but to our calculator. So that's just all the numbers for our buttons. So now we're going to create our operations. The first operator button we'll create will be our add button. So we'll create a variable name, call it similar to the ones at the top, but we're going to underscore add equals, assign it to the function add button. We're going to pass the argument which is going to be the plus operator. Okay, so then the next one we'll do, we'll create our subtraction button. Also, we're going to pass that through to our, with the minus operator. Okay, and then we'll have to make the other buttons as well. So let's create those buttons. So it's going to be the multiply and the division buttons. So we'll just say mult, variable name mult. We're going to pass it through the star for multiply. And then what we're going to do as well here is going to be forward slash, and then what we'll call here, we'll just call it div or division. Okay, so what we could do is just 
lay these out a bit better. We're also going to create buttons for the clear and also for the equal. So we'll call here, we'll call this clear. Okay, and we'll assign it also to the same function, but also within that function, what we're going to do, we're going to give it the C for obviously clear. And here it's going to be the equals button to be part of the equation. And then what we're going to do is obviously assign it the equals operator. We're going to create a list for the buttons to show where they will go on the calculator. So we're going to create four rows that will resemble the position of buttons on actual calculators. So we're going to have the first row is going to be button 7, button 8, button 9, and also we'll have the additional additions operator. So row two, is going to have button four, button five, button six, and the subtraction button. Okay, row three will have button one, button two, button three, and the multiplication operator. Okay, and our final row. Okay, row four. We'll have our clear button. Followed by button zero. The equal button. And the... equal button and the division button. We're now going to create loops. So we're going to create a nested loop, okay, to place each button on a particular location on the calculator window. So I'm going to create myself a variable, call it r equals 1. Then I'm going to have, start with my loop for row, another variable I've created for row in. Okay, so I'm going to use my list names. Row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. So you end your for loop with a colon. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here, I'm now going to start in column zero, create myself another variable, C, for the column. My nested loop for, for the buttons in row. Okay, I'm gonna say where I want it to be placed. Okay, well, I wanted to place it within the grid. So I'm going to say row equals R, comma, column equals C, and then column span 
just want it to span one row okay so then what I'm going to do here is actually add an counter increment counter okay so C plus equals one is the same as saying C equals C plus one I'm going to do the same for the R as well R plus equals one We'll now create our click button function. Okay, def click button, and that's going to have one parameter, so we'll call that parameter value. And then what we're going to do is get the user's equation, so we're going to create ourselves a, a variable call it current underscore EQ equals so we're going to ensure that it's going to be a string okay and it's going to take this from the display window which we've called the variable entry so it's going to get the information from there using the get function And then we're going to now do a, um, some if statements. So if value is going to be a C, then we're going to clear the entry window. Okay, so we create the call the delete function. Okay, so we'll delete it. Okay, then the next we'll do another elif, else if the value is an actual equal sign, what we want to do is actually compute the equation. So we'll create, call it, create ourselves a variable called answer equals um, ensuring that it's a string evaluate the current equation okay and then we're going to delete what's in the screen and then insert the answer. So we call the function again, delete minus one, that's where the position is. And then we're going to insert on the display. So the insert function. Okay, the answer. So if the user clicks any other button, then add it to the equation line. Okay, so we're going to do an else now. So else if the user clicks any other button. So this is on the display line. Okay, we're going to insert so we insert okay on the display line.
the value. How does the click button function work? Let's just put our colons here. So the click button works by receiving a, an argument as a parameter called value. Then what the program does, it gets the user's equation from here. So from the entry box, it gets the user equation using the get function. It's saying if the value that the user imports is C, it will just clear the whole information within the entry display widget. Else, if the value is an equal, then what it will do is calculate the answer. Okay, so here it's just saying it's created a variable. We've created a variable called answer. We've assigned it to the user's equation. Okay, what's already in there, what will happen? It will de delete what's every already in there and it will just display the answer. Else, if the user clicks any other button, then add it to the equation line. So here, we've got to actually add the value to the equation. So instead of a close brackets, it actually should be an add value. Okay, so let's actually run our program and see how it works. So we need to now call our create button function along with the main window function. Can we just look over our code ensuring that all the variable names are the same and our code is aligned? And we can save our program. Save. And if we just run module, then you can see we've created our calculator program. Okay, so we can do some calculations, seven times seven and the equals function. We can do another value because we haven't cleared it. So it's just going to stay on the screen. We can say that minus three equals. We use the clear button to actually get rid of what's on our screen. You can modify your program and add some trial and accept to eradicate errors. Um, but this was just a basic program to show you how to create a calculator. Hope you enjoyed this and want to continue writing Python programs. Thank you for watching.